And welcome back to Miniature Ca Dragons Comic Review. As always, I'm your host, Daniel Doc Gentry. And with us today, we have Woody, no Alex, but joining us as a special guest. Please welcome back to the show, Keenan. Hello. Or, or, or the ghost of Keenan, since we don't have a picture to prove he exists. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Keenan, also known as Meister Keen. Um, and uh, y'all know me. Yeah, back. Back, back from your, your world traveling. Yes, that. Yeah. All right, so what are we reviewing today? Well, let's see how everybody's doing. <laughs> you just jump right in. Look at this guy. All right, well, uh, so I, don't uh, know. I think we should always start off what we always do is hey, where's Alex? Is he carjacked? Alex is at PAX. Oh, he's not carjacked? No, no, he's at PAX screwing off. Why would he? Uh, why is he doing such things to us? Um, well, because uh, he has priorities, apparently. <laughs> Dude, it's Pax. Are you guys running? Yeah. Do you guys have a booth there, or is he there personal? We tried to get a booth, but they wouldn't accept us. We we were rejected because we had nothing to do with video games. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, except <laughs> it didn't always have to do with video games. Well, tell that to the people that run Pax. Hey, people who run packs, it didn't always have to do with video games, dudes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe it was founded by people that do webcomics. And... <laughs> <laughs> so, so do we. Well, it is billed as a video game festival. Yeah. No, they I... now have a tabletop. They've got a tabletop thing uh, in Philadelphia now. Yeah. Packs Unplugged. Yeah. Neat. Yeah, I had some friends from my old post podcasting days there. That dog is going to get on my nerves. So I apologize right now for a barking dog, but he is wearing the cone of shame, and he apparently doesn't like it. But we can get rolling here. It's spent two minutes. I tried to get some regular people conversation and show people that we actually know how to talk, but it didn't work. Uh, let's start off with this West Coast Avengers. Uh, Woody, tell us a little bit of history of this. Okay, well, the West Coast Avengers was basically the Splinter comic book way back in the 80s where they had too many Avengers, so they made two 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 teams. And the the West Coast never really did as well, and that ended. And they also had the Great Lakes Avengers, which is even worse, and that ended. And thump, thump. Um, in the background, sorry about that. Um, so I'm actually surprised they brought this back. I'm not sure why, other than maybe it's another Infinity War thing. But uh, it basically has just a bunch of kind of leftover characters who are having to put together a team on the West Coast, and uh, it's really interesting taking it from that exact premise. Like, that's actually the viewpoint in, in the series. It's like, we're all the leftovers, and we're now a team. And uh, I actually found it to be a lot of fun. I didn't expect to enjoy the book. Okay. Uh, what did you like about the book? I gotta ask. <laughs> because they really ramped up the fun factor, and they took a bunch of characters that just basically just took whoever was available, let's make a team out of them. And there was like fun banter. Uh, they had the right balance of serious and outlandish. And I actually really liked that moment where it's like, they kind of tricked me to think the comic book was over when you saw the, the 200 foot Tigra, who was a, an original West coast Avenger. And it's like, Oh now we like dun 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 moment. I'm like, Whoa. And then the comic book is keeps going. And I don't know, just something about it. Just like, Oh my God, I love this. And, and yes, I thought the land sharks were interesting. <laughs> All right. Hey, Keenan, did you finish? Uh, I am still <laughs> reading West Coast Avengers. I'm in the middle of it. I'm having fun with it. Okay. I like it. It yeah. seems it seems lighthearted. Um, the art is fine. Uh, the uh, the banter is great. I actually I actually enjoy this. I I've always thought that uh, Marvel Comics needed. You know, some fresh faces. It needed some. Uh, it uh, it needs something that's just dedicated to being fun. You know, it's gotten I less like, fun. No. I, I I like this is a book that cannot have any stakes, and yet they're they're making it enjoyable in spite of that. And I also love that yeah. there's two archers on the team, and that's stupid. <laughs> and two somehow, Hawkeyes. Yeah, and, and and somehow it works. <laughs> Well, they kind of hang a lampshade on it the whole time. Yes, yep. there's two Hawkeyes. Yes, there's two of us. 
It's, a, it's all a good lead into why I did not enjoy West Coast Avengers. Uh, first oh, off, we'll hit the top three that I always do, which is uh, art, lettering, and story. First off, the art um, was good. It, they went basic with it. Um, I think the sharks were really well done. When you picture land sharks, everybody has like different things, uh, yeah. Beltris, stuff like that. A- and I think they went. They have a very unique. Uh, look about them and they have some traditional things which I thought was interesting with the art and they cut in like I don't know each of the little scars and 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 uh, mm-hmm. smiley face things um, I thought that was really interesting the art's good again if you're picking any comic book up for art um, this isn't one to blow your mind but this is definitely a good this is a good solid when it comes to art a good solid comic book uh, the lettering it was easy to follow. Um, I was not lost at all. Where we've had some comic books in the past that I've totally been lost on. We've talked about that. Mm-hmm. This one didn't have that feel. This one, to me, felt um, it, it felt like it was easy to read. Like they wanted you to follow the story. The story itself isn't bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, which brings me to why if I didn't, why if I have all those three, am I not liking this comic book? Well, it's simple. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Stop milking things over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Get into new stuff that we can all get on board with. If you want this to be different and and you want to create something, which that's part of creation, is something a different then get in there and make something enjoyable and different and create your own thing. This is another, in my opinion, another, hey, let's tail back on top of this comic series that, well, now it's a movie, so it's super popular and we can sell things, we can get them out there. I do admit that it was fun. I'm not saying that it wasn't, and I, I want to be very clear on this. And, and, of course, everybody knows me, knows my um, my idea always is there's no such thing as bad comics. Having said that, <laughs> this is a, a, a brand new thing. It doesn't even feel like an Avengers. I've never read the West Coast Avengers, so I don't know. Um, the two Hawkeye thing, it was cute uh, at best, but it doesn't really bring forward the what this comic book could have been. And that's... Again, the things that when people read, I think they got. And, I mean, it might be fun. It might be cute on the first one. But uh, my understanding about comic books is can you get them to come back for the second and the third? And this whole reality show TV thing and a knockoff Deadpool and a second Hawkeye. And you want to talk about you, you want to show me that you're not trying to do anything original? That's how you do it. Just copy old things and bring them in and change them slightly but call them something different. Well, well, well. That that Gwenpool character is actually supposed to be from our world, and her superpower is that she knows what all the comic books are, and so she 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 she, ha- she has the power of, of like, you know, fourth, the, the, you know, like she's from the other side of the fourth wall. No, no, I I get okay, it. That's actually kind of dumb. I get it, but it's Deadpool yeah. with the the slightest little bit. And yeah, okay. again, yeah, you know uh, what? I can see that viewpoint. I, I can understand that. You're, you're, it's one of those things. Is it an enjoyable comic? Yes. Is it cute? Yes. Is it awesome banter? Yes. Does it read like new Deadpool comics? Absolutely. Does it give me anything unique that I can't get from a different comic book or comic book style? No. It doesn't give me something that makes me want to come back. And mm-hmm. having two Hawkeyes, uh, a second Deadpool, um, a different version of Colossus, these things do not make me want to read this comic book over and over again because I just feel like Huh, I feel like I've seen these co- these these uh characters in other things. Well, for for me, it it I think it may actually get me to come back. I mean, like for a Marvel book, I'm not not a big Marvel reader, partially because they're so corporate, but the thing is is for me, like in order to be able to get into a Marvel book, they have to bring something to the table that makes me enjoy what I'm doing enough that and, and and they have to bring a story that that that's f- so fun that you don't care the fact that the characters can't die, that 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 there's no possibility of any stakes in the story, and the only characters who will get the axe are the ones that nobody get, cares about. Like uh, I, I'm not sure that I think I, I think that boyfriend may may not last. <laughs> He's the one character there that can die. Is it? But, it, now, when you say that, is that because you didn't see him committed to the story or because you think it's like a, a favorite thing? And the only reason I'm asking is because when you say that, all I think is voting Dick Grayson to die by a bomb. Well, well, it's, it's because like, 
like you never heard of that guy before. He's just a knockoff Colossus. Like he's he's a brand new character that that may have very well been created for this comic book. Um, and so, but the rest of them are characters that have been around a while that that the company's invested in. And so, you know, he 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 may be the sacrificial lamb to build drama. But as it is right now with what they're trying to do with the comic book, it it is enough to 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 get me as a reader. And I'm thir- like I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Mm-hmm. And 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 I know just enough Marvel history to be to be to be you know to be in on the joke. You know, now that I've heard the critiques, I could actually tell you how this could have been better. It would have yeah. been interest. It would have been a lot more interesting to me if it had been a story of a team that had to pull together out of literally nothing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, just entirely new characters. Or maybe one or two familiar characters and a whole bunch of unfamiliar ones. And, uh, you know, what if they, uh, what if we'd gotten that awesome banter and the, uh, and sort of the interesting, uh, the, the interesting problems of, well, you know, East Coast has got plenty of Avengers. We don't have any out here. (laughs) Holy shit. We've got, we got land sharks. What do we do about this? Uh, we have to pull a team together and, uh, why not? introduce a bunch of B characters and uh, uh, put them in over their heads and uh, give us something actually new. See, that would have been, been better. That, that's what they did with the Great Lakes Avengers and that series flopped really bad and that's probably why they're not going to do that. Why did it uh, flop? Hey, there's a difference. I'm a data it, analysis it, guy. It's what I think. Did they it, not it sell enough? It didn't sell. Yeah, and, and that isn't necessarily a poor comic book or readership thing. It could be a marketing thing because here I stand telling it, you, I've never heard of East or uh, great lakes Avengers, And I lived in the great lakes. I would have just bought it because it said that when I was there. Yeah. Well, well the, the, the one thing with Marvel they're doing wrong right now is they put out over 80 books a month and they put out so many books that they can't market them. And a lot of their best product ends up being canceled because they are, are flooding the market. And, you know, there's all these books that get critical acclaim and they, they, they don't last 12 issues because nobody's reading them because they don't know they exist or there's too many books and people just simply can't afford to buy them. Yeah, we can get deeper into that in the final thoughts. But I mean, as it stands again, as a comic book, it's not a bad comic book. It was yeah. I, I give it to you. It was a fun read. But hey, if you want to put Professor Xavier, Hawkeye, Colossus and uh, um Deadpool into a comic book. I just say you put them into a comic book and call it a day. Yeah. But this feels like again not doing the same thing, just trying to cash in on what's working and what's cashing in. I'm just gonna say it. The X Men are dead. Move on. And uh, Avengers are on <laughs> their way out. But anyways, uh, coming back to the second comic book, which I actually very much did enjoy, Cold yeah. Spots number one. Uh, what do you got on the history of this one, Woody? It it, ju- it just came out, so there isn't really any history to it other than the obvious um you know inspiration when you read it it you know it's pretty clear where 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 the art uh, the author's mind was when they came up with the story but it's one of those things where for like it basically focuses on on some investigator who's being hired by an old man and they have history and it's not good and the old the rich old guy w- wants to get his his daughter back who just up and took off and it's very layered it, it, it's a ghost story, and what's interesting about it is, is right off the bat you see the ghosts. Like they, they, they bring them out immediately. And what got my attention with this book, and why I'm probably going to read read the story for, um, you know, as an, as one of my monthly titles, is it's one of the only times in my life where I read one of these horror comics that it actually got me with the reveal of the monster. Like, like it, it, it kind of creeped me out when 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 I saw 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 the the ghost, and then. You know, you're reading through and you find out like that ghost has been visiting the old man's daughter who then took off with the granddaughter and the old man wants the granddaughter back. Screw his kid. But and 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 the little kid had been drawing pictures of the ghost. And it's just like this is I'm really curious to see where the story goes. Um, I wasn't as impressed with the zinger at the end, but it's like, wow, this is interesting, though, still like. Where is this story going to go? You know, like, um, I I would have done something a little different, but I think that it really, once you're, if you're into the story to that point and you see how they end the first issue and it's like, it's like kind of a holy shit, mom, like, what are they doing? And ju- just for that, I'm in. 
I think. Hey, what do you think, you know? Well, um, I liked the uh, starting with the art. I think the art was nice for uh, for cold spots. Uh, they did an, the artist did a nice job of differentiating between scenes with the color schemes. I like the, his his use of the color palette. I think we got a really mm-hmm. gifted artist there. Uh, the uh, the lettering was fine. I didn't notice it, so I think it uh, and it flowed well. So I think it did okay. Mm-hmm. Um, as for the story. <laughs> I uh, it it kind of it kind of hit a lot of cliche notes for me, mm. which is okay. I mean, it's just kind of drawing on a sort of a library of tropes, but uh, it just it, it fell a little flat for me. And also, I think the monster reveal shouldn't have been a reveal. I think in the first issue, you don't reveal the monster; you reveal what the monster can do, mm. and that creeps out the audience. And then, as you go along, you draw the audience in with a mystery. Right now, I can see exactly what's going on. You got ghosts, and the ghosts can freeze people. Okay, cool. I'm not really interested or invested in what's going on from there. I'm not sure that it is ghosts. So, yeah, let me weigh in then. Uh, Again, I I agree about the art. The art is fantastic. If you do pick up comic books for the way people draw, this is awesome. The the ghost to people, the the framework, the coloring, the transfer. I, I agree a hundred percent. Keenan hit it on the on the wall. It's perfect. Uh, the lettering. I there were certain points that you could get lost uh, when he's talking. There's somebody talking in the off, but you're not sure where that off is, and it's two text boxes that just sit next to each other like that. It's a little. I, f- I figured it out right away, but again, I was sitting down paying attention to this. It wasn't me reading in between things that I do like I normally do. I think I would have been lost at the beginning and had to start over again. And that's just a a a, a point that somebody could read through and said, "Oh, I really enjoyed that because you didn't know where it was coming from," and blah blah. blah. But for me, it was a little off. The story, however, I think they've got you, Keenan. I think they got you exactly where they want you and all the readers. Oh, I figured it out. I know the monster. I know what's happening. Yeah. And I think that you're going to be pleasantly surprised because you don't start off with the ghost in frame three and not have something ahead that is going to blow everybody out of the water. If you do, if you don't, if, if, if Keenan's right and you've done everything, yeah, that, that was bad. But I suspect, from what I saw in the story, the storyline, how it was going, little tidbits that I caught in that, uh, just from reading old literature, is where I think he got a lot of his um, his idea for the writing of the story, like who was going to say what when, um, was that foreshadowing, what you see now is not what you're going to get. I am interested. Uh, I actually think I would read book two of this as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure these are actually ghosts. I, I don't know what they are. But I would be surprised if they are ghosts. Mm. All right. mm. Even if they are or aren't, I still don't think you know everything. Yeah, well, and hey, fair enough. That's the it's, big it's, thing. It's a good fake out because go like they always have those tropes of oh the ghost in the room the temperature drops, you know, and that it, it it's very skillfully alluding to that. But then what kind of throws me off a little bit also is how crazy the people are behaving in the presence of these things. And how the people that they're clearly stalking are just off their rocker nuts and believe these things are ghosts, believe these things are, 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 are their dead children or their dead wife or something. And that, to me, is a red flag that this isn't a ghost story. I, it just I, looked like a ghost story. I will point out, because I had to stop and reread just a little bit, they never say the kids are dead. They never say, yeah. they never give you enough, which is why I'm saying this is not what we think it is. Yeah, and and even I think ghosts, but the reason I'm saying that is because of how they're drawn. I don't think we know the whole story because they never. It's not like oh my god, they're dead. Oh, it can't be the kids because because why? Because they're off to college because they've moved out yeah. already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, it, it it it's just implied by the circumstances that 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 they have to be dead. But just it just the look of insanity on that woman's face, and then when you see the reveal of the ghost things, I mean that combination. Like if it, if that had been a movie, that I I would have been pretty freaked out in the in the movie theater. I think, especially but, if they but, would have started it with the kids playing, and then you pan into the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, or, or, uh, or, or 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 the sound of the kids playing, but you don't actually see them. Oh, there you go. It's like yeah. um, uh, Curse of Strahd. <laughs> yeah, which I won't ruin for anybody. I get that reference. 
Good. I don't, but probably D and D thing. It's, it's yeah. I play a hundred different games. What do you need to broaden your horizons a little bit? I'm <laughs> I'm doing stuff. You are doing stuff. I'll give you that. <laughs> um, again, I think I think it's important with this. This is it. It seems trope. It seems cliche. You think you know everything, and then I challenge you reread it because what you think you know, they never say. They okay. never well, confirm that these things are what you think they are. They are letting yeah. you as a reader fill in the blanks, which tells me it's not what it seems. Yeah. Well, but the, the, the trouble is that it starts off on such cliche notes. Yeah. Right. That's, that's the point. That, that's maybe that's by design. And if so, I mean, I understand that, it, but it's not convincing it's, me to read the next issue. I'll read the next issue because now I want to see if I'm right or, or if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, it could very well be that the story is going to have some really, really nice twists, but ah, I don't know. Um, you, you probably won't find out if you're right or wrong until issue five. Huh. And, yeah. and, and even then it'll leave, a, it'll be a zinger that gets you to read the second graphic novel. <laughs> well, if it's an actual zinger and if it isn't so damn cliche that I just lose interest, uh, then yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. We'll we'll see. I'm willing to give it a shot. I will I will give it the benefit of the doubt. But uh, but just so far, I'm not impressed by the story beats. I okay. I see what Keenan's saying though. I mean, it, re- regardless if you like the way the story was written or not, what was left that makes you want to pick up issue two? I think they did their purpose, which is to try to convince you that this is a trope that is cliche that it's you mm-hmm. fill in the blanks and it's not what it's going to be. But it's a good point. I was just thinking about because he mentioned it. I picked up on that, so I want to read issue two. Like I was mm-hmm. like, this is way too in your face. Here's what's going on. And then rereading it, being like, wait, that's not what it said. Like I was inserting my own thoughts. But if you read it one time through, what gets you to come back for book two? And, and that, I mean, we've talked about that before because there are comic books that, that could be great that drop that. And this might happen. Yeah, well, we, yeah, and, and, and we viewed a couple that had a great start. You know, <laughs> and they yeah, then they fell down by issue three. Well, you know, the, the, the thing, thing with this one for me is like I take a viewpoint when I'm looking at writing and storytelling that like it's really hard to have an original idea because no matter how original your idea is, odds are somebody's also thought of it. And I'm looking at the execution and, and like there's nothing in this story that looks original. It's, it's like from beginning to end, it is tropes you've already seen before or something you've already seen before, except that. I've never seen this ghost before, um, it, 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 except in a web series, and um, that none of, that I, I doubt Doc's heard of, and um, and like, but like, like it, it feels like there is a fun and very well thought out and very creative, possibly original idea behind it, and I think that the execution of these things we've seen before is is done well, and it's done well enough that it it definitely got got my attention. Well, I mean, if this were a retelling of some older story, it would be a beautiful retelling. It's it's very well done. Yeah, the good art, uh, the the dialogue is well written, and and mm-hmm. so forth. It's just it's just along the lines of these tropes that are so familiar, or they mm-hmm. seem so familiar. Maybe I am being faked out. I wouldn't know yet. Yeah. Maybe you're you're just a jaded reader, Keenan. And Maybe I'm a jaded reader. Well, I wasn't jaded about. Cool. <laughs> I wasn't jaded about West Coast Avengers. That is true. That is. I true. find it interesting that that we're, that we're divided so well, like between the two comics. That me and Keenan were like, "Yay, West Coast Avengers." Doc's like, "Screw that." And then me and Doc are like, "Yay, Cold Spots." And Keenan's like, "Screw that." <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that's why I always say that there's no such thing as a bad comic book because no matter how bad or real, I mean, in, in actual measurable terms, how bad a comic book is, there's somebody out there who mm-hmm. enjoys it. Um, yeah. I, and I used to say this about video games all the time. Don't ever make fun of video games, especially when Nintendo was out because I knew somebody whose favorite game was 10 yard fight. Remember the football game with just the dots, no real graphics, no nothing. And he, yeah. and they loved it and they would swear up and down by that game. And yeah. and I realized at a young age that wow you can do something that totally flops and there's always somebody out there who thinks it's the greatest thing ever. I don't think comic books are that much different. I I really think I mean think of all the indie comics that are out there and then some. Now that you've got me into them and I'm looking at some of them, I'm literally looking at some of them going, why are people subscribing to this? <laughs> and I, well, what, and, what, and I realize I it's about- because people enjoy it, but 
it, it, I have these terms that I measure things by, and I, I, I could say tangibly this is a bad comic book, but people love it. Yeah. Well, with Cold Spots, what, what I love about this is is this book is, like, you, you were saying you want an indie book. Well, this is as indie as a, as a comic book can get, even though it, it is by a major publisher. And this is a book that could never exist at Marvel or DC. Like, it, it, they would never publish it. And we get to read something so interesting and so unique and so different. And I love that. Which I, is, I, I think that's fantastic. Which is why I think they're in the movie industry, because they know if they just continue to be comic book companies and they didn't do anything else, that they would flop because people... People are they they've gone past the prime of their good stuff and they don't know how to put it to rest and they've never come up with anything that has been great to follow up. Well, yeah, they're not the house of ideas anymore. Well, it, it it's again as soon as Marvel became corporate, um, you know that that was pretty much the the end of the house of ideas. Every one of their heroes is a you know multi million dollar property now. Even so, the ones that are worthless are still worth money. Right, <laughs> right. God, so, I hope Marvel's not listening to this this show. <laughs> even if you are, hey, Marvel, if you're listening to this, write a comment below if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're watching it live, write a comment right now. I've got the thing up, but the chat will pop up. But yeah, and, if you and, and I have a really awesome pit, pit, pitch for Ghost Rider. If Call this me. gets all the way back to Marvel, come on, tell us why we're wrong. I challenge you yeah. to come out here and tell us why it's great to keep beating a dead horse over and over again while the dollars fly out of its mouth. And then you try to convince me what you're doing is art and unique and something different. I, I, I You're right about Marvel and DC, and I'm, I'm going to go on this little trouble and we'll bring it back. Because I've done some studying, and I, it's what I do. I data analysis, I put things together, I look through them. And I'm telling you right now that what DC is doing right now, you will see DC make a shift and go to the forefront and ideas will start coming out of DC again. It, oh, no. Mean, no, it's, yeah. Just well, but what Marvel and DC kind of take turns being on top no 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 you're missing my point here i know that but i'm telling you they're going to bury marvel here soon that they're going to have yeah. a stronger force it's going to be more unique i see dc's trying new things dc's shutting down its artists they don't want these people going out there and being um uh are, are tagging their company good or bad on one side of a political issue they're shutting them down and they're going hey get to work on what we're paying you to which is mm -hmm. come up with a unique idea, come up with a unique story, get back to the comic book. And I think that that alone will bring these people back because they're going to need some kind of focus, some kind of release. And I guarantee you it's going to force these new ideas, these new comic books and things are going to come fly. Are all of them going to be hits? No. But because Marvel won't take a chance, after they're done beating the horse with these Avenger movies and somebody just gets too old to continue with it, they're going to die off and Marvel will too with it because they're not doing anything to protect the future. Well, I think Disney will step in before that happens. Disney already did it with Star Wars. Don't think they won't do it with Marvel. Well, I mean, like, they, in order for the long term investment of the MCU to, to work, they have to keep the comic book brand alive so they have stories in the future. Hmm. But how? But, yeah, By creating but, but, movies of old stories, switching them around, getting directors who've never read them, getting actors who don't understand the character, keep pushing these things forward? What have you done with these movies besides really, really, really separate movie fanatics and comic book fanatics and separate the two? And there's a very, very few that fit into the middle. But I've said it before, I've got to watch Marvel movies like they're independent of comic books, not like they're a representation of them. Well, they, they are independent of comic books. I mean, like... They are they are their own universe. They're they are their own thing. But but they only exist because the comic book was successful because their purpose is, is to take the comic book stories and these great comics, or or not so great comics, but like like the the stories of Marvel are then represented in movie form. And in order for that to occur, Marvel has to continue to be Marvel. And sooner or later, like like some like somebody will have to step in and fix Marvel, or it'll die. Yeah, and but but it can't because it's too valuable. That's why that's why Disney will have to step in eventually. I don't know if it wasn't for Cinderella, we wouldn't have Disney either. So I, I get what you're saying. Let's yeah. we can only see what happens. I'm just saying it's observations, observations of data <laughs> that I see out of everything. Uh, final thoughts, Woody. Well, uh, I love both books. Uh, West Coast Avengers was fun. I will probably pick up the second one just because I want to see if it continues to be fun, and I'd love to see if they can save Tigra um, and Cold Spots. I really enjoyed that book. It's probably going to become part of my monthly reading list now. 
Keenan, final thoughts on the last two books? Well, uh, I want more new stuff. Uh, I guess my, uh, I guess what I like about West Coast Avengers is it looks new to me. Mm-hmm. And what I don't like about Cold Spots is that it doesn't look new to me. So uh, I, I, I guess I, I, just, I just want the field to be creative. There well, we go. W- w- would you read the second issue and come back and t- tell us if you're still, if, if, you know, <laughs> if it sells you on issue two? Or... With a, Absolutely. With Absolutely. a working webcam? With a working webcam, yes. Okay. Um, again, I think I said it all. I don't want to beat it too much. I did enjoy Cold Spots. I think the art was great. I agree. Avengers is new. Um, I, I just, I, it feels old to me. And I bet I see what you're saying. It definitely is a new push, a new property. Um, I think both of them are great. If you're collecting Avengers, West Coast Avengers is really the, um, the, the perfect set. What I mean by that is not too much art. You know, not trying something too new, but not getting too old. It's this perfect spot of the art. It's a perfect start of the story. It's a perfect spot of lettering, whatever you want, and a a collection of comic books. I think West Coast Avengers is definitely a good comic book to look at and say, here's how a comic book should be written, whether you agree with the story or the people (laughs) or stuff like that. It really was a really good basis. I like Cold Spots, but it's because I have an idea that it's not going the way we all think it is, but that's because of how my brain processes things. But the art is extremely awesome. If you just collect comic books for art, again, you can put this one right next to Descenders, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're over time, so do you guys have any final last plug thingies that you want to do? Hopefully we will have our websites back up and running soon. (laughs) But, uh, uh, you know, uh, you can catch up with uh, Cyber Symbiosis at ConwayTheSeries.com and uh, it, see, see the, the epic of, of Keenan's character hero. <laughs> uh, I actually don't have anything to plug except that uh, Cyber Symbiosis is awesome and I love that my character is a hero. Yeah. The, he, he, hero is a hero. Hero is a hero. Yeah. Well, then, as always, read more comics, keep it nerdy, and live your dreams.